Today we're talking about picking up massive quantities of items all at the same time. We've got a 50,000 item purchase that we are sorting and getting ready to list right this second. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to talk a little bit about a huge purchase that we've been working on for quite some time. We've got 50,000 or better individual items right this very second that we purchased all from the same person. Uh, Cost-wise, we've got around $9,200 now invested into these. It's a huge, massive thing. We're going to talk today about sorting through it, getting ready to photograph, and then listing and storage of these items right now. Okay, so sorting wise, we got 50,000 or more buttons, military buttons. It's over 200 pounds of it, so it's a ton of them. But the problem, of course, would be to sort these all out. They've all got to be searched through books or online. They've got to be separated by country, by branch of military, and the whole works. Everyone, you know, has the potential of being slightly different, even if they have the same basic emblem on them. It's how they're designed, how they are done. What's on the back of each one also matters for these sorts of things, too. It can dictate how old they are, whether it's a Victorian one. Other things on stuff like this are the crowns that are on them as well, too. Certain crowns are for certain royalty, so you can tell if it's a Queen Victorian button with the crown on top of them. Now, some of them obviously say where they're from. We just literally dump some out of a bag and they're sorted through. My kids will do it or whoever's here working that day will literally do it. Now I do have quite a few books on just buttons. Now this one is only the British Army so if it's Air Force, Marines or anything else, Navy, it is not in this book. Now I've got probably 20 or so sites that do show uh, descriptiveness on buttons so you can identify them that way. So basically these are ones that we haven't sorted at all yet. These are ones that he's pulled out. I think my son was working on this, my youngest one. And um, then he sorted them by grouping. And then once he's got a group of them or he's picked out what, he's, what he can find, then he'll go one by one and put like kinds together. He actually has the page number on these. So you can always tell and go back and refer to what page these buttons were on. Uh, and then he writes down what they are. So from here, I can go ahead and list everything in here. We'll keep combining them and combining them and combining them. And this is just a random lot of stuff. So I don't get any breakdown. I don't get anything. When he's done with this bag here, he'll just grab another bag. And I've got like 20 or 30 bags like this. Again, it's well over 200 pounds, like 220, 230 pounds. Now we spent a good chunk of change, eight, nine thousand dollars probably in buttons. We've got a couple buttons that are worth four and five hundred a piece, mind you. So when you think about the profits from something like this, investing that much into this sort of thing, the money's there. You can make enough money back and still make tens of thousands of dollars in profit from something like this. Your biggest problem, as I said, is going to be time, IDing them in the whole works. You know, it just depends on, on your abilities to do this. Now, if this is a one-person operation, you're going to be spending all your time with this. Yeah, there's enough money here to make it worth your while, but for some people, it's a boring thing, and you're searching up. For me, I love looking at these and knowing what they are. After you've seen the same one so many times, then you're going to go ahead and know what it is right off the bat. Now, these are the ones we've already searched through. Again, that's just the ones out of this one bag that we've pulled out. Everyone's ideable for the most part. These all date back to Queen Victoria times. There's some that date back to the 1850s. I've got some in here that date back to the 1812 era, War of 1812, British artillery and things like that. A lot of money in these sorts of things if you know what you're doing with them. Again, the books literally just show page after page after page of various um, emblems you'll find on the buttons. And these are all literally just British Army buttons. They have one of the biggest uh, assortment of buttons due to the different sorts of regiments, uh, countries, or possessions that they had. Anything under the crown had its own army unit. So that's why you got to be careful and make sure you get the right one. On some pages, you'll see some that are very similar. There's three just on this page with elephants in it. So they're all different. 
there could be just a discrepancy in a cipher, a royal cipher, which is like a script letter or a pair of letters or something along that line. Um, and like some, it's just units. And sometimes other countries have almost identical looking buttons. Like there's French buttons that looks almost similar to this. There's only just a small scant difference other than the markings on the back of them. So this is an area that we do love. I do love looking through these. My youngest son is into these as well. It's interesting to find. It lists other areas as well. Anything that the British government had army forces for. So you'll find Australian in here. There's African in here. New Zealand. There's some Canadian army ones in here. And the whole works. There's regional ones. There's from, from China, like this one right here is a China um, regiment. So it's just uh, interesting. One. I believe that's a, a border patrol of some sort. Uh, let's look up. That's 252... The Border Regiment, yep. 1884 to 1959. This design has been worn by uh, the King's Own Royal Border Regiment since 1959. So you can kind of get a judge on, you know, date on some of these as well. Obviously, the backs on them will tell you how old it is. Certain companies made certain buttons during certain time frames, and that's how you can tell the difference. So not just looking at the front, you have to look at the back on everyone. In fact, that is a cipher there. Um, and I do believe that's the Queen's Cipher, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, very interesting, something that we do love. But when you're doing it like this, you really got to break it down, sort them out, and go from there. Now, we don't have to sort out all the buttons. We can do a bag at a time. If we have two of the same ones, it's an easy chore just to go back in and type in something to figure out. And we can just add to the quantity or list it as extras in inventory somewhere hidden in the listing. Bags like this, again, these are like 5 to 10 pounds in most of these bags. They're just random assortments. And again, I've got tons of these sitting in inventory right now. There's some British Navy... Um, crown court there's just quite a few interesting things in here okay so here we have some already sorted uh we've just labeled them this big bag is going to be the b bag and every bag from there on out is going to have a letter on it and then in each bag we're going to have individual little bags like you see here now i've talked about this part of it before once we've sorted them and they've been ID'd, then they'll go in a little bag. Now, you don't see any papers or tags in this one here because they're all self-explanatory, the buttons themselves. They say where they're from. It's very obvious. So the ones you saw showing the branch of the army and such forth, they're just going to stay with those little tiny slips inside of each little bag, and that way I can tell what they are all the way up to listing. So if they don't have... Any little pieces of paper, it's very obvious. These are like uh, fire department buttons. It says Buffalo, that's very obvious where that's from. City of Louisville, Louisville, Kentucky, very obvious where that's from. Uh, this is uh, Blue Island, and I'm not really sure where that's at, but I'm sure that's something I can sort down through. So they're all distinguished that way. Here's RKO, the movie company. That's a button from one of their movie theaters from the 1920s. All sorts of things are in this uh, bag right here. Uh, let's see, what's this one here? Uh, looks like a foreign uh, Guatemala. It's a police officer's button from probably, oh geez, 1890s from Guatemala. So very interesting stuff in here. I love this sort of thing. This is one of the next ones that's going to be split up and broken up. And then they'll be put in bags like this. And then all of these here, this is roughly about 100 and... 40 or so pounds worth of buttons in this one tote right here. Each one of these bags is like 5 to 10 pounds. You've got to be able to break it down when you get these massive purchases in. There's no other way to do it. No matter what you do, if you are buying pallets, you need to break it all down and sort it. Now, how you sort it depends on what you actually have. So depending on what you have, you have to figure out your best route. For us, most of the ones that are ideable were done immediately quick. We'll just sort those out. That way we can have stuff ready to go as quick as possible. And so when we want to get some more money and inventory coming back in from this, we can just list them right off the bat whenever we want. They're all ready to go. They're on a card. There's a B card for these. Now each one of these will have their own card, each one of the bags. And the card will go in there until they're listed. That way there's no confusion on anything else. Once these are listed, this bag right here will have the B label on it, a big B on it.
and then that will go in a bin just like this. There'll be one row, so you can tell instantly, you know, it might be A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, just in one of these bins, and then that's it. So when I need to find something, I pull out the appropriate bag, quickly dump it all out on the table, and then I'll just grab the one that's the correct number. Now from there, obviously, I'm gonna have to dump these out and figure out which one, you know, I just sold. I would rather do it that way than try to inventory each individual item here. I get questions on that on inventorying each item. And stuff like this, it's almost impossible to do it. Most of your time would be spent in keeping inventory and all that kind of stuff too. 50,000 items roughly is what this one investment purchase wise is. 50,000, maybe even more than that. I'm just giving a rough guess by weight alone and by what we're, our counts are coming out with just what we've looked through already. Now, I'm still making purchases of stuff just like this and these same button things. This is one of the biggest assortment of buttons I've ever seen in my life, mind you. It's, you know, one of those once-in-a-lifetime chances, but it doesn't have to be buttons. You know, it can be anything that you get. Anything that you can get in mass quantity. I get photos in mass quantity. You know, uh, 8 by 10 photos from movies. I'll get 5,000, 10,000 I can get even sometimes too. Now, I have people and businesses that can supply this. It's not like I'm just going out there and finding 10,000 of something or 5,000 of something. Records I can usually do that with just because I've got a long list of people that have been in the business and that are usually older than me that, that know or that have run stuff such as maybe a a jukebox uh, business where they supply jukeboxes with 45s or services to do that. Now, like postcards too. I can buy postcards in five, ten thousand at some times. I've bought, you know, an entire estate of postcards in the past and it's been this massive assortment that almost filled up a, you know, a large full-size modern day van. So the stuff's out there. You know, certain items like the buttons are very scarce uh, these days to find at least that quantity. But postcards, I can pull up a big, huge assortment of postcards fairly often if I really want to dig for them. Same with records, same with photos, trade cards, labels, uh, books even, sheet music, all of those topics, even comic books, I can get huge comic book assortments, um, action figures, I can get huge action figure assortments. It's all broken up basically the same way. If they were postcards, I'd sort them by state. Then we'd break them down into stacks of 25 postcards, and then we'd list them that way. Again, I don't worry about having an individual SKU number for every single item that we have, and that's not the essential part. That'll take you more time than I think it's worth. We'll, when we pull something out to ship it out, we always have the actual listing up and look at the picture to make sure that the item matches every time. So the SKU number, you can mess up a number, but you can't mess up if you look at the item every time you are pulling it. So again, I'll pull the bag out, I'll compare the image, what I'm looking at with what's on screen to know for sure that I've got the right item. Sometimes an employee or even myself may have put the wrong number on something. So if I go by a number only, I'm defeating the whole purpose of the process of not mixing stuff up. Now, I have mixed up things in the past, and it's going to happen. I've had records that had the same song on one side by the same performer, but the record number was different, and the flip side were different. So stuff like that can happen um, if you don't pay attention. So these days, I visually look at every item to compare it to the screen, regardless of any number whatsoever. Not having a custom SKU doesn't mean you're not, you know, keeping track of some form of inventory with it. It just means that you don't need a SKU to pull the item, I, I guess is the gist of it. Um, I get a lot of questions on the inventory aspect of it. A lot of questions on the photoing and the whole works and stuff like that, too. You've seen how I photo. Time is of essence when you're doing this. And if you've got massive quantities of this stuff, could you imagine me trying to track down each individual item in here? Staff or no? Now, I have staff, as most people know here. I have employees, as do quite a few other sellers that we've been talking to lately. But the point of the, this is, is time. It all comes down to time. Whether it's my employee's time or not, I'm not going to waste time in areas that just doesn't seem to be essential and won't change the, the overall aspect of the business. Now, if I'm going to pull out something and I'm going to match it to the screen to make sure it's the right item, I don't really need to waste the time to sit here and put a skew on each one of these. The, the time it would take is, is horrendous, you know, to make sure everything's skewed, everything's in a little bag, everything's labeled and stuff like that. 
you can mess up, you can read it wrong. Visually wise, looking at the item to the screen is always the best in my opinion. I have not messed up a single order by doing it that way. Every order that we've done in, in a couple of years now has been the correct item. You know, again, as I said, we have made mistakes in the past, but visually wise, everybody pulls it and looks at the image, regardless of anything else. Even if there's a number on it, the number is basically just for storage. It'll at least get us to the right spot. So maybe they put a 321 on a thing that should have had 322 on it or something like that. Hopefully this really gives you an idea on how you go about something like this. It's a massive amount of inventory all in one fail soup, all at the same time, 50,000 individual items in there. Getting stuff in bulk is the way to go no matter what we do. Bulk runs the day for us. Bulk runs my business. Bulk is probably the majority of everything I do is purchased in bulk. And I'm probably talking 85% of everything we have is purchased in bulk. One purchase here, like these buttons, 50,000 listings, this is a couple years, three, four, five years of continuous income, no matter what. They're going to sell constantly. I will probably, once if these were all up at the same time, I would probably sell probably a whole bunch every single day of the week, constantly for years. And that goes for almost anything that we sell. You list everything up, it's passive income. The stuff just rolls in over time. Now it's gonna take a little time to get the money back. I'm figuring a few months and we should have our money back out of these, maybe even sooner, depending on our listing strategy when we start to roll these out. Now we're gonna have a bunch of these up as well into fourth quarter. So the end of third quarter, I'm gonna have probably a good five or 600 up of the better ones that should sell fairly quickly. So hopefully once those have been up for a month or two, I should be able to get all my money back. Before Christmas, we'll keep loading them, keep listing them. They'll be listed on multiple sites as well. Uh, again, storage is basically the same thing as I've been saying. It's the bags that's in a big tote, and then off you go. It's easy to pull anything that way. There's no confusion whatsoever. But anyway, that's what I have for you today. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. Marky and I got my weebles.